That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Infinity Pool, the third film directed by Brandon Cronenberg, which premiered at the 2023 Sundance Film Festival just days, mere days before Neon is releasing it January 27th, 2023. I know Brandon Cronenberg's other films, Possessor. I, Possessor's his second film, which we reviewed, and I quite liked. Uh, and his first film? Antiviral from 2012, which I wasn't a fan, on, a fan of, but again, has an interesting concept that makes me think he's an interesting person. Uh, but much like this film feels like uh, some B sci-fi story that would have been a better segment on something, maybe, but... Well, we received a lot of comments to review this movie. It was not on my radar. It, you were excited to watch it. Oh, yeah, it. definitely. Well, I liked Possessor so much, and then, you know, the Cronenberg clan and the body horror. I knew some... And there are elements of this I like, but I think it very superficially kind of sticks into uh, aesthetics. I wasn't feeling this movie. It's fine, I guess, but it, it didn't send me anywhere, and the story is... I think it's kind of ridiculous, but <laughs> I like I like B horror schlock sci-fi, which it's in that vein uh, with weird, you know, subversive subtext. Which for the first hour I thought it was giving me, but then it's not. Uh, and, and then it just feels like he's got this filmmaker has gotten to a big enough place where he can command a certain budget and uh, stars to star in something that probably should have been drafted out a bit better in my opinion the basic story it's set in modern time we see that on this uh, fictional country or in this fictional country called litolka litolka there is this luxury resort um and alexander skarsgård and his wife are there mm -hmm. and they're there because he is suffering from writer's block so he thinks maybe this will unclog it and while he's there, another patron of the resort, Mia Goth, approaches him and says, Oh my God, I'm such a fan. I loved your first book. When is the next one? Of course, he's flattered. He had previously told his wife, I don't want to go out tonight for dinner. This place is whack. Like, we can just stay in the resort. But then Mia Goth's proposal that they go have dinner at the same restaurant he just told his wife no, he says yes. So the four of them go, Which Mia and her husband and then Alexander and his wife. They hit it off. They have a long night of drinking and having fun. And they weren't supposed to leave the resort. So they had to borrow a car, like rent a car from someone illegally mm -hmm. to leave the resort to go have dinner at some restaurant. And on their way back... No, they're not, they're not like picnicking. They like drive up through these winding hills. They've been out for a while. And there's a sexual indiscretion that happens. Oh, sure. But anyway, to speed it along, they leave this interaction and the four of them are in the car. Alexander's driving and he hits someone and kills them. And this is all like in the trailer and the synopsis of the movie. They leave the scene of the crime. The next morning they wake up to the cops knocking on Alexander's hotel room door like, we know you hit and killed someone. Come down to the police station. And they're like, we're a very strict nation. If you kill someone, the punishment is you get killed. The price is forgiveness of blood. Mm -hmm. Lucky for you, though, we have a, uh, a law for tourists, which basically means that if you can afford it, you can buy a double. And that double will go on trial and pay the punishment. So I was assuming a double meant like a wax dummy or something. No, these fools out in Latoka are cloning people. Mm -hmm. Like, they can clone you like... In a matter of hours, I guess. Yeah. And it's like your full body. And not only is it your full body, but it has your full consciousness. Mm -hmm. So this entity, like this sentient clone of yours, would then go on trial and then pay the capital punishment. So Alexander pays it. We find out that he doesn't have any money. His wife is rich. Mm -hmm. So he uses her money to buy a clone. That clone gets the death penalty. They're forced to watch it. But we find out that this is all a game. All of these people on this resort, or many of these people, have money. And they know that they can come to this country and commit crimes. And when it's time to pay the punishment, they just pay a little bit of money, get a clone, and move on about their business. So if that's not bad enough, Mia Goth sought out Alexander mm -hmm. to play with him. He's not part of their clan. They're making a joke out of him. Mm -hmm. So the final like 30 minutes of the movie is that being revealed. That 
You think you're one of us, but you're not. We're just toying with you. We come here every season and you're just unfortunately the person we picked on. He is able, to, and so they threaten him, but he's able to get away. But the film ends with Alexander calling his wife because she went home early. He couldn't leave because he claimed he couldn't find his passport. But we find out he hid his passport because he wanted to stay. So the end of the film is him calling his wife saying, I'm coming home. But then we also see him staying behind at the hotel after the season is over. So I wasn't sure how to read the ending. I assumed that because we also see Alexander pack three urns because every time you get a clone that's killed, they cremate it and give you the ashes. So we see him packing three urns. So my assumption is one version of him went home to his wife and another version stayed on the island. But that's basically it. That could be, yeah. I, 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 I think I lost count of how many deaths that he experienced. But I think that whole thing was not very interesting. So I also lost interest in like, oh, so is this like, what? which version of him right now is this? I didn't care. You don't care. I think what the greatest mistake the film makes is it's, we're stuck with these very unlikable people and that third act needs to come a lot sooner because there's just long stretch of these people that we're not supposed to like that we're stuck with in a very repetitive fashion yeah. uh, like something needed to happen or something a little more interesting because it culminating with you know Mia Goth as Gabby and her husband uh, from the main baddie played by Thomas Kreshman you know finagle an extra double of uh, Skarsgård of James so that he's confronting himself and kind of, um, cause they're, they're emasculating him and how they're playing with him and bringing out the beast in himself yeah. and making him alpha. To me, that's not very interesting. No. Yeah. And I think I was very distracted by the logistics of this cloning and the cost of it. And well, I, sure, but that, you know, well, I can forgive I, some of that. Well, because I think this felt dated to me. It's not particularly edgy. I know Cronenberg is known for, like, his dad is known for body horror. Mm -hmm. And Possessor had a little bit of it. Yeah, for sure. This film has, like, visuals that I've seen before. It's not particularly gruesome. I know there's a recent article about an unedited version, an un rated version where we see breastfeeding that was cut out. I think an NC-7. But I, I did see that. I don't know if We there's... do see, like... In, we get like two orgy scenes that have this like similar visual effects and we see like a vagina like the faint visual of a vagina opening well we know. see Skarsgård's character getting m masturbated and to orgasm we do see a, pe a, a penis I don't think it's his um, probably not but I mean and we see it ejaculating we see a nipple sort of turning into like maybe like a worm is coming out mm -hmm. of it I don't know. I mean, this doesn't feel fresh to me. It's one of those films. I I like the ambiance of the first hour. Again, he's using cinematographer Kareem Hussein, and I, I do like the look of the film. It's just that we get stuck in like this kind of repetitive slog, especially with this hallucinatory moments, which are fine the first time, but they really feel exactly the same. I also thought because the I the synopsis on IMDb, like the whatever you call that, the one line, the log line, the log line tells you like the first thirty five minutes. Mm -hmm. So sure. then it's like I was sitting there and the movie's two hours. So it felt long because the first 30 some minutes, I'm like, oh, this is exactly what I already know is going to happen. And then we get an hour of them kind of being vile. And then the final 30 minutes is like, oh, they're playing a joke on you. But not even that vile for a film that really is about murder tourism. Uh, and I'm much more interested in how this country is kind of. Which feels very because this is like a Hungarian Croatian co-production with Canada. Right. So all of this made up country feels like ex eastern soviet block kind of feeling because i think the better story would have been this film does not explain like or delve into the fact that these officials are basically selling their people mm -hmm. like these rich tourists are coming and paying to murder the population and the film doesn't really talk about that. I mean, I guess as the audience, that could be something we could talk about. Mm -hmm. But then I have questions about the logistics of the cloning and how much it costs. And because I think a more interesting story would have been to focus on murder tourism, but make it affordable. Because all these movies are always the same. The elite, the 1%, they can afford to do it. What if you could get a clone for like 1500 well, like then I mean, all of us could, for the most part, do it. Which like, is the, log the logical next step from all those people that fly to Africa and Europe to hunt big game, right? Well, or there's sex tourism where a lot of people fly to like Eastern, like Southeast Asia mm -hmm. and 
you know, because they can do stuff they're not supposed to do here and, and it's affordable. I, I, f- I feel like for someone whose name connotes like, I don't know, like something on the like border. Sure. sure. I, I just don't think this movie was doing anything interesting. I agree. And especially look by the time we get to where it's going and looking back, like the how he hits that kid in the first place because it almost makes it look like there's something maybe supernatural going on with the lights on the car. You thought so? Well, I don't know. You, you're there's too you don't have enough information, so your brain's trying to figure out what's happening. And then how did, exactly did Mia Goth uh, target him and uh, etc. But I think the dialogue is also not very good. In fact, when Thomas Kreshman is uh, explaining to Alexander Skarsgård what's going to happen to him, I had a hard time kind of kind of putting that together like it's just this large swath of dialogue and then every time these other zombies as they call themselves are partying all of their dialogue's bad amanda bruegel stuck out as being pretty bad for me and i don't know if it's just because i'm used to her playing a terrible version of herself on rupaul's canadian drag race but um yeah not- she did stick out to me as well um I also, there's a scene towards the end where Alexander, they say he has to sacrifice the dog and they bring the dog out and it's a version of him naked on a leash. And then it's a very brutal scene where he, I mean, that's probably the most brutal scene is Alexander killing himself by smashing his head in, like mm-hmm. by punching it. I I guess that, that was lost on me because <clears throat> we've already seen him witness himself be killed. So, I mean, what what are we doing now? Yeah, like, we're already a little bit desensitized to <laughs> the violence of that. And then there's this odd tone of comedy, which I did snicker a couple times, but uh, that also kind of detracts from the, the initial menace of it, of being a, you know, a stranger in a strange land, a tourist, uh, and, and getting into trouble. Uh, Cleopatra Coleman plays M, his girlfriend, uh, and I think she does... She reminded me of Tisha Campbell. <laughs> sure, <laughs> for some sure, a little bit. Um, and then Alban, uh, Mia Goth's husband, is Jalil Lesper, who is a notable director and, well, mostly actor, but he's directed several films, uh, especially some Laurent Contet films from the early 2000s that I liked. Um, I thought they were fine, but it reminded me of that movie Duel recently with Karen Gillian and Aaron Paul. But of course, Island of Dr. Moreau, Clockwork Orange, the Rock Hudson, John Frankenheimer film Seconds. Uh, it's clear that he's pulling from all of these things, but... I think it also feels like Hostel or Purge. Sure, Purge, yeah. Or even The Hunt. Yeah, well, it ha- it's trying for that same kind of comedic tongue-in-cheek vibe at moments as well. Uh, but what about Mia Goth, who I really liked? I again, liked for the her first for hour. the first hour, and then she kind of became grating. <laughs> it, it goes, <laughs> it's a lot. It goes into 1970s Shelley Winters' uh, Grand Guinal of Shrieking, kind of. And she also reminded me of something of like Yvette Mimiu from Jackson County Jail with, with Tommy Lee Jones. She, I, I love her vibe and look on screen and even before Pearl. But yeah, it, 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 it hits a wall where it's just like, okay, this is not an entertaining, enjoyable in any way anymore. What would you give this movie? Oh, remember that movie Multiplicity with uh, Michael Keaton? No. Okay. Uh, two and a half. I would give it two and a half out of five as well. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye.